what is the people how's going this is bharat and welcome back to the day five of the uh kiwi md versus flutter challenge we are progressing nicely with on the day four we started with the flutter's ui and we built a complete application with just one hour of time and i'm really really excited to uh, start with this day because you're going to be linking my flutter application with the fast api server if you are not uh you've already not watched me from the day zero and also the introduction video of the series we built a simple server on the day zero and then when they started this entire challenge so uh, make sure to watch that so in this video we're going to be starting with the kiwi uh, flutter application linking it with the fast api and getting dynamic data and loading it as part of the application that's what is going to be the entire video let's get the video started all right i have a quick shout out to a couple of people who have been amazing with this series you guys have been uh, amazingly supporting no doubt about that but these two people stand out for me because they have been uh, commenting on every single video i have released till now first is to r rakesh who has been asking me for for a kiwi md uh, instagram clone which i'll definitely do once this series end and second is kulo tungan ug uh, who's uh, actually talking about kiwi md and all of these things that you can do with kiwi md thanks again for the support that you guys have been giving me uh, let's continue with this video all right so i have the basic uh, we left it off somewhere in in this section in the yesterday's video uh, i don't have anything running at this point of time but we left it off somewhere here and uh, we have a home page and uh, i'll just quickly run this home page to show you guys what is happening we have an home page and there's like there's basically a login page and once you enter the username and password it takes you to the uh, home page and finally to the um, money transfer page that that was the entire flow that we had for kiwi md application same flow for flutter application as well let's quickly run this and you will see for yourself what is happening all right so the first thing that we need to do obviously is to have uh, my http uh, dependency installed uh, so we'll just make the http dependency installed and don't forget to do the pub uh, flutter pub get i've already done that so no problem for me and the second thing is to actually have the import package uh, flat http we need to have the flutters http http slash http dot dot is the http we'll call this as this point from all right last for pub get make sure to do that get the dependency because if you have it in your pub spec it automatically get it and resolve it for you so no doubt no problem there it's finished Package http oh my god i missed this why did i do that all right so http is done and one more thing that we also need to do is for this thing to work right we also need to add a permission in the um, android's uh, manifest so go to android inside the app source main and go to your android manifest.xml just before the application have this tag you say users permission and you say the permission is going to be android name android dot permission dot internet all right save it up and we'll try it our first application so we are i'm, I'm going to be creating a separate class here uh, probably called as uh, let me create a dot file probably right where is the dot file request util i don't know request it dot dot and i'll writing my i'll be writing my methods here so let me do that and come back and we'll discuss more about it Alright, so we've done a couple of things here. We've done the login page and you also started populating the home page. And a very crude uh, look at it is like this. So we have the data from the server that is getting com coming into this, uh, coming into the uh, app. And we are able to load it and similarly for the credit balance as well. So both spend history and credit history is done and you're also successfully able to log into the application. What did exactly do? The couple of things that I did was first thing, I created a request util dot dot file, which is going to be having the endpoint and things like that. And it is taking care of uh, doing all the requests for me in terms of this uh, post request, get, get and post for all these things. Now I'm still, I'm still, a, uh, I'm still yet to include this into the application. So I'm going to be doing this right now. So for now, 
all these three calls are being made and data is getting uh, called from the server and it is getting populated very very simple to do but couple of things again to add here is that uh, whenever you want to the whole idea behind flutter is to have a stateless widget and a stateful widget if there is a state that is going to be preserved throughout the application you need to go for a stateful widget and there are a couple of things that you have to have understanding with respect to the async and await uh, meaning this as asynchronous programming is something that is going to be the future for sure and uh, it is taking some time to build that as part of the uh, flutter application now i did not have that problem with my uh, kvmd all i had to do was make a request get the data and put it inside and things were done but it is also making it a little bit uh, the, the number of lines of code is getting larger but also making it uh, even more easier because i don't have to handle none value i don't have to make sure that uh, none data is coming up and also very interestingly we have the uh, future bu builder widget within the flutter which will be able to take care of the circular progress indicator so all of that is part of the application and it's actually easy to in the long run if you see right the application is much more uh, good looking and also uh, foolproof but in the short run when you're trying to prototype faster the http calls and making sure to add it in future builder widget and then again a list view builder and things like that are taking slightly longer than the expected time anyway it is not taking so much time but it's still taking a little bit of time that's just want to do quickly point that out now the remaining part is to have work with the uh, money transfer page wherein if i click the same bank account i should be able to enter the values and when i send the money uh, it should be able to send it to the, the destination account and it should get recorded here let me do that and come back and show you guys what exactly is the final application looking like Alright, so this is the start of the application where we need to enter either a username and a password, correct username and password. Let's say we are entering a wrong username, right? And uh, all right, a couple of wrong usernames, uh, not in the DB. So it does fetch the hit the server and fetches the data and turns out that the data is wrong so you can see that it says forbidden so wrong username or password re-enter so that's what is happening at this point of time and let me move it out of this frame um, so let's say now you're entering the correct username and password now there is no way to i need to have a add a callback so i'll add that uh, tomorrow so the callback should say that it's wrong username re-enter so that we can do tomorrow now for now let's enter the correct username right correct and you enter the correct username uh, it goes inside the application and uh, it looks through the spend history, credit card history and transfer money. So it, it's able to pull the credit card history and this is the same as we got from the uh, server as well. Again, need to uh, make sure that this is much better looking. I, I don't think so. This is good looking. And uh, however, the data is coming in cleanly and you're able to have a good list view. Similarly, for the credit card balance as well, you're able to get the data. Now, for the bank transfer, uh, we'll try to do the bank transfer right here. I, I'm trying to transfer it to IoT 512 because that is the uh, user DB that we have. So the user DB, we have IoT 512 as a username and the password is in 11. That's not the issue. So I need to transfer some money to IoT 512. I am bar 1, 2, 3, 4, right? So from my account to their account and the uh, re-enter the account, uh, 512 just for just for the sake of uh, doing it let me transfer 500 bucks right and when i transfer the 500 bucks account goes through money transfer successfully so if you see here um 
the username is and the money transfer successfully from the server is also coming let's check here as well and if you check here the user the, the request has come hit the server and we've gotten the money the current user balance is 7400 and money is transferred to the destination account so this is how you are able to work with both your flutter as well as your fast api server very very easy to set up and also at the same time it is also easy to make sure that both of them are working fine and a couple of quick uh, notes on this so how do you handle the token in the kiwi we did add add it via the access token not json file similarly we are also having an access token uh, access code dot json which is a json file where we are adding the access token for our login and into this token and this is, is this the correct way to do it in in a long application where you are going to fetch a token you will not be saving it in a similar file like this in a json file because it will be easy for anybody to open your apk via an adb command and uh, you know it, they 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 can easily take the token out um, we will not be doing that instead we will be keeping it as part of the uh, application's life cycle where you will be keeping it as part of its own config uh, whereas the data cannot be taken out it's also called as uh, local storage for the application right we'll put it there and you can take it from that token and and hashed token not the normal token you can hash the token and put it there that's the first point in order to fetch the token uh, we did similarly in kvmd had a just simple path value and took it from there that's not how it works in flutter what you need to do as part of the flutter is to probably access the get application documents directory which is nothing but uh, an uh, file or the local path that comes as part of the application so in this application uh, it's getting pushed into the apk it's getting pushed into the android device and it has, has its own local path this uh, access code or json is uh, actually copied into that local path which is actually being uh, called using this method so you need to make sure that this method is called that and this is the steps to get it so once you get the directory you get the path from that and then you access the access access code or json file and that's pretty much how the entire file system is actually working and these are the two things that i want to answer and finally make sure to have a file similar to this where you have a request util and uh, have all your login uh, all, all your get and post calls inside that this makes it easy to maintain and at the same time if there is any bug you can debug faster also and pretty much that's what i'm going to be ending for today because we have successfully uh, done and integrated a flutter ui with a Kiwi, uh, fast api uh, backend and that's that's under two hearts and which is very very impressive so i'll end this today's video here and probably meet you guys in tomorrow's video where it'll be uh, styling this application and finally rendering the apk once that is done the final day is obviously to check which is better is it kvmd or is it flutter we'll test it across a lot of different uh, parameters and i'll be giving my final result on that day i'm very excited let me meet you guys tomorrow until then Bharat, peace out have a super awesome day